So, what do we mean by crowdsourcing today? I would like to define crowdsourcing for you as a way to help walk us through this process as loose networks of amateurs and professionals that are brought together to solve problems leveraging new technologies. And you're familiar with a lot of these new technologies. I mean, you've heard today uh, talking about mobile, talking about digital, talking about social. So these are some of those new technologies. So where is it going now? We, we talked about logos, we talked about a uh, bit of design work, and that's, that's relatively simple stuff, and it doesn't warrant me being up here on the stage of TEDx Moncom. What warrants me being up here is to share with you some of the new and innovative ways that crowdsourcing is being used. So, for instance, if, uh, if anyone in the crowd has an engineering background, you would appreciate this. There's a crowdsourcing community now of engineers that are, uh, that are redesigning the way we think uh, of cars. And it's a community brought together to crowdsource ideas and concepts and have actually built a car. And we're not talking about a cheap and expensive car. This is for a niche community of people spending eighty dollars to $100,000 on a crowdsourced vehicle. Crowdsourcing has been used in fashion design. Oscar de la Rente uh, crowdsourced one of his collections this year. Crowdsourcing is being used in tourism. Uh, several different countries around the world are rebranding. They're allowing their citizens to participate in rebranding exercises. So, you know, we've heard of Incredible India, we, you know, Sweden and different countries, the Philippines, are, are leveraging the power of the crowd to uh, recreate themselves. And a, another interesting one in my mind would also be uh, in the entertainment industry, Ridley Scott, famous film director Ridley Scott, created a, a, a film called A Life in a Day. It's a beautiful film. It's 24 hours around the world, in a, 24 hours in a day. And what, he, what they did is they simply put a call out for people around the world to do, uh, upload videos from any part of their working day. So you can see there's a lot of different ways in which crowdsourcing uh, can be uh, used. And I wanted to give you some practical examples because who doesn't love fashion, who doesn't love entertainment, and, and for the car geeks out there, who doesn't love automotive? Crowdfunding is allowing people to participate in different initiatives by donating or by investing micro, uh, uh, micro amounts of money towards a, towards a project. And so, and this can be in a variety of different projects, but one of the world's largest to date is Kickstarter. Kickstarter is a, is a platform that allows artists from a, a, across the board, you can be a comedian, like our friend Kay, the Russian, Kay the Russian, who knew? And it can also be, uh, it can also be posters, it can also be films. Documentary filmmakers are posting their projects on, online. Basically, Kickstarter is the main benefactor for the arts today, but bar none. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the fact, uh, about what they're doing. 27,000 different projects have been posted on the Kickstarter platform. Almost 50% of those projects have been successfully funded. That, that percentage, if there are some uh, bankers in the room, I, I think uh, you'd be nodding your head to say that almost 50% successfully funded is, is, is awesome. And the reason why it's even more awesome is it represents 100 million US dollars. So these are individuals. This is Crowds of people, that loose network of, of amateur investors and professional investors coming together on a platform like Kickstarter. There's over 140 different crowdfunding platforms in the world. Crowd labor. What crowd labor does is it takes all those tasks that we don't want to do in the workplace. It breaks them down. Uh, there are platforms that break them down even into smaller tasks. And then they distribute them using those new technologies I was talking about. So, for instance, they, they'll distribute it through uh, email lists. They'll distribute it to uh, um, uh, broadband mobile uh, phones. So you can have uh, uh, 50 or 60 different people around the world end up doing all those different tasks that we don't uh, want to think about or that in some cases are bogging our companies down, bogging employees down. And so I'm thinking about like uh, translating, uh, you know, YouTube, for instance. Uh, they're 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 uh, they're putting um, uh, they're putting captioning in some of the videos. So that is a micro task that can be done through uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk, for instance. Um, correcting copy, uh, correcting documents, um, inputting data can be done through uh, micro uh, uh, micro tasks. And so someone goes to a platform, the workers go to a platform, they find an interesting task, 
the work gets done, and then Amazon facilitates the payments to these workers. And the interesting thing about this is, again, we're not talking about a cottage industry. There's over 200,000 micro tasks that are now available to, as the last time I checked on the, the Amazon uh, Mechanical Turks website. So this is big business. This particular piece is about civic engagement. The people at R say democracy is not a spectator sport. They've changed the rules of the game. What they've done is they've created a platform where people can, you become a member of the community of people that are interested in advocating on a variety of different issues. And these are not, these are not light, fluffy issues. They're dealing with uh, gay rights issues. They're dealing with seniors' issues. They're dealing with environmental issues. And the, the end result of all this, you know, it's not just about people going online inventing because, I mean, anyone can, you know, there are a lot of platforms, there are a lot of ways for people to, to go online and invent. But this is about people voting up different questions. So they're crowdsourcing the questions that they want to ask government officials in Australia. And RSA is facilitating the top five questions from any one of these uh, uh, categories. And they're going to the appropriate, they're going straight to the politicians that are handling those particular issues and having a sit-down session. And so um, one, of the, one of the key examples uh, the, the Rio G20, uh, it's been 20 years since uh, the Rio summit. The reason why RSA is, is, is important for this is that they were able to sit down with the local uh, government officials in the Melbourne City Council. And they were able to sit down, voice their opinions, and lobby for those government officials to bring up. The, the end result is that these government officials are going to take those issues with them to the G20 summit, uh, the, the sorry, the, the Rio Plus 20 Summit that's happening this year. So that's a, that's a, a direct impact on the way public policy uh, um, can be changed. CNN has what's called a citizen engagement program. It's called iReport, and you may have seen commercials for it. You may have seen uh, an, um, a story done by uh, a youthful looking non-journalist. Hi, my name's Peter, this is iReport. And you may have also seen, on a more serious note, uh, you may see a story, um, for instance, uh, uh, the, the unfortunate uh, uh, Japanese tsunami and the, and the storm and everything else. Uh, but what, what happened there was that CNN brought on one of the CNN eye reporters to be able to give live commentary and feedback to the situation. So CNN eye report is a very interesting case because there's approximately 753,000 eye report accounts that have been created. So this is citizen journalism at its best, the opportunity to be able to share your story and potentially have it even be shown uh, on the global CNN network. This is powerful stuff. And you're also thinking about the amount of content that has been uploaded, the amount of content that has been crowdsourced, is over 800,000 videos and pictures that have been uploaded to the iReport site. Collective creativity, we talked about this a little bit. We talked about the logos, we talked about the designs. One of the major platforms for uh, designing something differently is 99designs. They're the world, one of the world's largest. Basically, uh, a brand and creatives are on the same platform in the same community, so you log on, you input what you, uh, you want uh, from a creative uh, uh, brief, then you collaborate with different designers, and by collaborating with different designers, you know, typically uh, a business may have one or two designers on their team that they go to all the time for graphic design, and perhaps that you're not always happy, uh, not that these people aren't doing great creative work, but you're not always happy with that work. Um, in this particular case, imagine, you know, times that by 10 or 20 or even 100. In some cases, there's 100 different creatives that will pitch for your creative brief on this network. Advertising agencies are trying to figure out how they can plug into this, how they can, they can also, uh, without losing their message, without losing loyalty to their brands, because there's a lot of trust uh, that brands hand over to, to the agencies. And so uh, the last thing is, is you're able to choose your favorite design from that list. Now, the interesting thing about this is that uh, there's been uh, over 100,000 uh, different contests since the founding of 99 designs and over a million dollars this month was handed out to creatives around the world. Very, very impactful to the arts community. Community building is reaching out to like-minded people online 
And there are, you know, various platforms. Like if you're a photographer, for instance, you might, you know, belong to some community on uh, uh, Flickr. Or um, if you are, you know, a bike enthusiast, you belong to a bike club. Like, so it's the same kind of concept is that these, uh, uh, this Daily Gromit, the website, is what they call citizen commerce. And I like this, and I think it's a very TEDx-worthy uh, um, example, because this is a community of inventors, this is a community of creatives, and it's also just a community of people that like to buy interesting products. There's also the, the idea that there's meaning behind the products that they're purchasing. And so customers vote up the different products on this website, and the really neat thing is, is that there's only one product that's sold on the site per day. So if you're, if you're struggling with a particular problem in your organization, perhaps you're, you're uh, looking at innovating a product or you're looking at uh, an ad campaign, uh, open innovation is really about taking stock about what you have and then using different platforms or even uh, an email list and sending it out to the rest of the people on the list and asking for feedback. And this particular example is what's called an innovation challenge, and I brought this one up today because there's, a, there's going to be some, um, you know, you're going to hear from some students at, at some point today about, about innovation and about, about TEDx. And this, is a, this innovation challenge is oh, it's a, a global innovation challenge for university students. And some major brands, AT&T, GE, and I, I don't know the other one, uh, Syngenta, what they've done is they're paying to have these, they're, they're sponsoring the, the event to have these university teams come up with case studies for problems that they have in their organizations. And this actually, uh, again, I, I think whether, you know, if I was the CEO of a company or if I was someone entrusted with trying to solve these problems and I was a major brand and, you know, th this is a, a major point right now is that, you know, how much of it can you publicly put out there? And so this is, this is, this is a definitive moment in terms of uh, public trust you know, are, are people going to respond in a positive way to your message? And also, uh, at the end of the day, you have some super MBA teams. That, you know, students of today are, are, are solving some of these problems for these brands. Now, a few of my, uh, a few of my favorites. Uh, Lego Mindstorms allows you to, uh, to build robots, and also these, these robots get voted up and uh, have the potential to be uh, products in the Lego catalog. Lego also has another uh, customer-facing project called Lego Kusu. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of it, but basically it's a, a crowdsourcing uh, model for customers to come up uh, with uh, product design and customer feedback. They've created an, an entire, think of a white-labeled Facebook for Lego lovers. So they get all that rich data. They're getting all those people uh, in a community uh, not only are those people interacting with each other, but they're interacting with the brand, they're giving feedback, they're, and they're creating products that are available uh, uh, after uh, several months of, of a rigorous um, debate within the Lego team. So uh, um, the next one is My Starbucks Ideas. This is where, you know, I, how many of you love coffee? Excellent, who doesn't? <laughs> but uh, My Starbucks Ideas, again, is a, is a way for you to participate in, in, you know, we might as well, when you think about it, th this makes complete sense. You're, you know, some of us, maybe more than others, are uh, drinking Starbucks coffee or uh, other versions of coffee on a daily basis. Um, but you're able to give feedback, and they're using that feedback in a major way, and, and they're localizing it so that you're getting, you're getting feedback from different parts of the world. And it's intelligent branding in a way. It's intelligent because they're listening to their customers. Uh, MSL is, is one of several different uh, public relations firms, uh, part of the publicist group around the world. And uh, this is, is by no way, uh, this is an unsolicited example where over, uh, they, they tap over 700 of their employees around the world. What they're doing is that they realize that they have all this unleveraged talent in their organization. This is really about, you know, we talk a lot, I've talked a lot today about using technology, these loose networks to, uh, with, with technology. But they use, they, they use the technology to tap information from 700 of their own employees. So, for instance, you might have a copywriter. On any given day, he's, he or she is working on their copy, but also is now part of this global crowdsourcing uh, of ideas that potentially can change the company that they're working at. Now... Uh, EFA, Education for All, is the United Nations program, 
where citizens uh, in different countries, in developing countries specifically, are able to voice their opinion and ideas on how the United Nations can build education programs. This to me is very powerful. It, t it is flipping the model of just throwing money at problems. It's flipping the model, it's listening to the people that they're giving the money to. And lastly, CrowdMap. This is, a, this is one dear to my heart. Um, they, this is, a, again, um, a citizen uh, example. And the reason why it's dear to my heart is that there was a project done here in Hong Kong. It was done with the Clean Air Network. And they created, um, they created a map. Citizens participated in creating an air quality map. Uh, basically, they were measuring different uh, um, air quality measurements. Forgive me, I'm not as scientific as some of the other people in the room. But they were measuring different... Uh, uh, they were measuring for different things, and they were able to leverage uh, the crowd to do that. I'm personally grateful to this particular project. This is what's called the Noun Project. Their mission sharing, celebrating, and enhancing the world's visual language. This, uh, you've seen some of the icons that I was using today. This is a crowdsourced project where they're using symbols and icons, and it's used in the public space in different cities around the U.S., and it's now going global. Leadership teams are doing more with less, and they're going to the same people and they're coming up with the same solutions, and nothing is changing in a lot of these organizations. What I'm proposing and, and, and what I'm putting out there is a new idea, moving away from groupthink, which, is, which in a lot of ways uh, slows organization, organizations down. Crowdthink, on the other hand, I want you to envision a better organization. I want you to envision an organization where it's more lively discussions, it's more, more contributions from more, more sources. It's not the same people, it's different people bringing new ideas, new creative, and, and new potentials and innovation for your company. Lastly, I want to leave you with a quote. John F. Kennedy once said that every individual can make a difference, and they should. I believe that every crowd can make a difference, and every crowd should try. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be intimidated by the crowd. Thank you very much. Yeah.